Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So today guys we will be talking about Kirill the Trill or as you could also call him Kirill Kaprizov. I have to start guys kind of personally because I, uh, I am the fan of Minnesota Wild personally and I have been cheering for them since I'm watching NHL or actually covering the NHL quite closely so that is probably since the season 2015-2016 or so so really not that long uh, but uh, I really have been a fan of Minnesota Wild ever since I started watching NHL and uh, we really were I, I don't want to say we are struggling the Sabres for example are, are right now struggling right their playoff drought etc etc but we were like average right Minnesota Wild when you think of Minnesota Wild you mostly think about average right uh, you probably are not getting past the first round of the playoffs so it was kind of frustrating and another frustrating thing was that we really did not have any bright star since probably Marian Gaborik himself I'm personally from Slovakia to be honest Gaborik is of course also from Slovakia from the city of Trenčín so it's you know I was also cheering and still am still I am cheering for Marian Gaborik if you don't know he has a very popular TV series here in Slovakia right now so yeah Gaborik here in Slovakia he is quite a thing and he played for Minnesota obviously he was probably I would say arguably the biggest star Minnesota has had in the team's history okay and right now as you probably know in the last years Minnesota did not really have that big star almost every team seems to have that big star but Minnesota was one of the very few exceptions right of course Connor McDavid in Edmonton Ovechkin in Washington Crosby in Pittsburgh uh, Brent Burns, Eric Carlson in San Jose, uh, you have uh, who? Ryan Getzlaff was in Anaheim, uh, every basically team. When you think about Arizona, probably Oliver ekman Larson. of course, last season there was Taylor Hall. When you think about the Rangers, have Panarin, uh, they, have, they have had Lundqvist, but really the big name from Minnesota was missing. And obviously, as we know, Minnesota is called the state of hockey, so I think really Minnesota needed that star player and it is very, very likely that that star player arrived just before this season and it is no, no one other than Kirill Kaprizov himself. He's one of the most enjoyable players to watch, I think, so far this season. For me, obviously, because I'm a Minnesota Wild fan, uh, and I, to be honest, I really don't watch these games, many of the games, live, because, of course, I'm in Europe, so the time zones, like the majority of games during the regular week, start at 1 a.m. here in Europe. In Minnesota case, they probably start, they usually start when Minnesota is playing at home, just to know you guys in Canada or U.S., okay how we have it in Europe when when Minnesota is playing at home the games usually start at 2 a.m. my time I go to school I'm not watching that okay I'm not staying up uh, during the night I know that some of my friends actually are watching the NHL at 2 a.m. but I'm not doing that I think that wouldn't be good for my uh, general life in general uh, but in Minnesota currently they are of course in the West Division so if they are playing on the West Coast uh, in Anaheim, in San Jose, in LA, the games start in Central European time at 4 a.m. So I'm also not getting up at 4 a.m. Uh, but I'm watching all the games that are during the weekend, right? For example, as you all know, the week uh, the weekend games start in York on your continent. So in America, they start at approximately 1 p.m. right Eastern time some start even 12 um, 12 o'clock Eastern time so at noon and that means that they start quite early here in Europe so we have plus six hours compared to the East time so if the games start let's say 12 East time that means that they start 6 p.m. here in Europe which is a very decent time so actually also Minnesota will be playing this weekend 2 a.m. to uh, sorry 8 p.m. here so that's 2 p.m. Uh, they are playing I do believe against Colorado so I'm very looking forward to that watching Kirill Kaprizov live is always fun uh, so I just wanted to settle on that topic guys and right now let's talk about Kirill Kaprizov more in detail so he was born on the 26th of April 1997 so right now he's 23 years old and this is his first season in the NHL he was born in Novokuznetsk which is obviously in Russia uh, his weight 
I have these guys in European numbers, in European uh, like uh, categories. So I hope you do understand, okay? Weight 91 kilograms. I don't know what's that in, you probably say pounds, right? I don't know, but it's 91 kilograms, which is, I was pretty surprised, honestly. I thought he would be like 80 or something like that, but he's actually pretty, I don't want to say that he's like, you know, uh, or fat or something like that, definitely not, but he's a pretty big guy actually, so I was surprised about that. His height is 175 centimeters, he shoots left, he is playing left wing, and he was drafted 2015 by Minnesota, obviously, fifth round, 135 pick overall. So it was quite a steal when you think about it. For this guy, he was drafted 135 overall. That means that 134 players were drafted before him, which is just, uh, you know, it shows that you can pick some quite decent players even in the latter stages of the draft. And this was probably mainly because it was quite clear that Killer Kaprizov is not interested coming into the NHL in the next few years, which proved to be quite right, as you can see. So Kirill Kaprizov started his uh, playing career in the KHL, which is the second best hockey league in the world in Russia, Continental Hockey League, uh, in Novokuznetsk at his home city, where he played the first two seasons. So first season for Kirill Kaprizov, 31 games played uh, in the second best NHL hockey league in the world, four goals, four assists, eight points, quite a solid, you know, start to his career. Then, basically at the end of the season, he was drafted to Minnesota, but he spent another one, two, three, for five seasons in Russia. So we, as a Minnesota fans, were waiting for Kirill to come over for five years. And it looked like eternity to me. I was waiting when Kirill Kaprizov would finally come. And finally, this season was the time for him to come to the United States. So 2015-2016 season, he was once again playing for Novokuznetsk for his home city. 53 games played for him, 11 goals scored, 16 assists. That's a grand total of 27 points. 2016-2017, uh, he played in Ufa, okay, Ufa, Ufa, um, Salavayet Ufa, Salavayet Yulayev Ufa, I think that's the full name. Uh, so 49 games played in Ufa for Kaprizov, 20 goals scored, 22 goals, uh, uh, 22 assists, that's a grand total of 42 points. So he had a really good uh, totals here. And also, guys, you have to realize that in KHL, the players don't used to score that many points as the NHL players in the recent years. And they also have a uh, less amount of games played in the regular season because there are uh, uh, less teams. So you won't see in KHL players scoring 120 points like Leon Dreisaitl or Connor McDavid in the recent years, okay? Over 100, they just don't go. They usually end up, when I looked up at the league leaders, I do believe the league leaders tend to have approximately 70 points, I do believe, per season. That's the league leaders. So in KHL, there are not that many goals scored as in the NHL. Uh, so season 2017-2018, this was his first season in Moscow at the capital city of Russia. He was playing for the CSK Moscow. He played 46 games, uh, 15 goals, 25 assists. He scored 40 points, so pretty darn good season for him down there as well. Actually, the season before in UFA was a little bit better, but also this season very solid. Then 2018-2019, also playing playing for CSK Moscow. He was playing in 57 games. He scored 30 goals, which is very good. 21 assists added. That's a grand total of 51 points. And in 2019, 2020, so the last season, which was obviously ended before the end because of the coronavirus, it was postponed. Uh, he played 57 games. Once again, he was playing for CSK Moscow and he scored 33 goals, which was, which was his career uh, maximum. He also scored 29 assists, which was also his career maximum. And he registered a grand total of 62 points which meant that he was the third best player in the league, according to the points scored. Uh, Vadim Shipacho was the number one player. Uh, so, yeah, pretty darn good season for him. This was his highest grand total in his career. So he, will, he definitely was at the top of his career right here, uh, at the top of his very early career, not in his, when we are not considering his career in the whole, just in these, these five years 
or six years actually when I'm counting correctly. Yeah, sorry, that's six years in Russia. This was his best year. And he finally decided that he will go to Minnesota, finally. So obviously, we as Minnesota fans were all excited about it. Uh, so, first season in NHL for Kirill Kaprizov is going pretty, pretty well. 2020, 2021, so far this season for Minnesota, 27 games played, 10 goals, 15 assists, that's 25 points. And before the season started, I even predicted Minnesota. I do believe I have made on this channel predictions uh, for the standings after the season would be over. And I do believe that I predicted Minnesota to finish fourth in the division, but I was a little bit skeptical. It was more of a, I am a fan of Minnesota, so I really want them to see them in the playoffs. So I predicted them to finish fourth. But I honestly probably, in deep of my heart, heart I, knew, I knew that probably they wouldn't make it to the playoffs. That was my assumption, but they are playing just unbelievably well, and I think the most important factor is the Kirill Kaprizov. The kid, as the players are saying, as the coach is saying, his work ethic is just very great. It's just very good. He keeps working on himself. He keeps producing. He seems to be such a funny guy, always smiling, always having a good time with his teammates. So I think that was a very, very important step to bring Kirill Kaprizov overseas to the Minnesota. And Minnesota is playing this season absolutely just unbelievably well. In my just, you know, in my dreams, I wouldn't have even imagined that Minnesota would be fighting with Vegas Golden Knights for the first spot in the West. That's just unbelievable, guys. And Kirill Kaprizov is a big, big part of that Minnesota success. But also, we have another frontrunner for the Calder Trophy, which is Kapo Kakonen. But that's a topic for a whole new video. So, Kirill Kaprizov, so far this season, and other statistics, plus minus, plus 11. Pretty, pretty, very, very good, right? Penalty minutes, eight penalty minutes. So he's really not taking that much penalties. He has taken only four two-minute penalties so far in 27 games. So really, he is not sitting in the penalty box that much. And he, this is points per game. Probably you thought that that was power play goals, but yeah, that, that is meant to be points per game, okay? Uh, so that's, he has, or he's averaging 0.93 points per game, which is very, very good. And I just, as you can see here, I just really wanted to compare the first season of the Artemi Panarin, because he was in quite same situation as Kiro Kaprizov. Also, Panarin was playing in KHL for some years before he decided to go to Chicago, okay? So Panarin in Chicago, his first season after he came from Russia. That was the season 2015-2016, which was probably the first season where I really closely started to follow the NHL. And Panarin played in 80 games, he scored 30 goals, added 47 assists. So it was a great year for Artemi Panarin, that was a 77 points grand total. He was averaging 0.96 points per game. So that's a little bit better than Kirill Kaprizov. So Kirill Kaprizov actually... In Minnesota, of course, Artemi Panarin, this was the Chicago after they won their second Stanley Cup in, in a few years, right? Or they, their third, actually, in 2015. So, really, Artemi Panarin had those star players next to him. I don't want to say that in Minnesota we don't have star players, but Kiro Kaprizov is playing with Matsu Carello, which definitely is not that big of a star than Jonathan Taves was at that time, right? Or Duncan Keat, etc., etc. But Kiro Kaprizov just... Really, he's, as I have said, his work ethic, uh, just something about that guy is special. The way he, he plays, his moves, it's just a joy to watch, to be honest. And I hope that it is, it is a joy to watch Kiro Capriza, even for the fans of the other NHL teams. Guys, definitely let me, down, down, let me know down in the comment section below if you also enjoy watching Kiro Capriza and what do you think of, of him, okay? So this is it for today's video. I just really wanted to post a video about Kirill Kaprizov. Kirill the Trill currently definitely the front runner for that uh, Calder Trophy. But we have in Minnesota also other very, very good prospect. That's Kapo Kakonen, and not a very good young player in Ottawa, of course, Tim Stutzle and Kevin Lincoln and in Chicago, another just decent goaltender. So we have a lot of very, very good young players playing uh, this uh, season in the NHL, of course. Also Alexis Lafreniere, 
but Lafrenia really isn't at his best right now. So yeah, this video was about Kiro Caprizo. Thank you very much guys for watching. Definitely leave a comment down below and also like this video guys. And please subscribe if you have not already guys. I'm starting, I I'm really wanna start growing this channel. I'm, I'm posting videos about the NHL on a regular basis. So you will be notified when I will post another video about the National Hockey League so that you don't miss them out. Thank you guys very much for watching once again. Hope you stay safe. And yeah, definitely watch hockey uh, and uh, yeah, I will be talking to you again guys probably quite soon. So bye guys and stay safe. Bye guys.